How's it going everyone? Vlad here with SolusPLC.com. In the last couple of videos on Siemens PLC programming, we've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about how to build function blocks, we've talked about how to read inputs, how to drive different outputs, and today we're going to be building on that knowledge in order to drive the analog value into our PLC. So we're going to be using an IFM distance sensor, which we featured a couple of times on this channel, which is going to read a distance based on the position of that sensor, as well as the object on the other side. So we're going to be reading that analog value and we're going to be building a function that's going to allow us to scale that value from an engineering reading signal into what humans can understand, which is essentially a distance in meters from the sensor to the object that it's pointing to. Let us briefly review the connections that need to be made from the sensor to the PLC. As we've talked about in the previous videos, we've already connected the power and we do have a signal on the digital side coming back from the sensor into the PLC. However, we are using output number two of the sensor, which provides an analog zero to 10 volt signal that's going to correlate to the distance from the sensor to the object. Now, we're not going to go into too much detail as to how to set up the sensor because our focus is on getting that data to the PLC. But what you need to know is that we've connected the analog output, which is currently on this white wire, to analog input number zero on our Sematic S7-1200 CPU. And that is capable of reading the same exact voltage, which is zero to 10 volts. And the sensor is going to supply, as I've mentioned before, a signal of that same value. So in other words, the closer the object, this is going to be zero volts. And as the object gets up to six meters based on the data sheet of this specific sensor, it's going to supply 10 volts of data. Now, what's also important to note if we go into the data sheet is that the full scale range, meaning the engineering conversion value that this voltage is going to drive is going to provide us with a data word of zero to 27,648. And that's going to be the value that we'll need to scale in our software. So let's take a look at TIA portal and how we can get this value into the right measurement. So the first item we're going to take care of is building our function. So I'm going to open program blocks and notice that we have the main as we've always had with a blank new project. I'm going to double click on add new block. And here, as I've explained in the previous episode, we'd like to select a function because quite frankly, we don't really need to access the internal values of that specific function. I'm going to keep that in ladder. We're going to label that number one. And here I'm going to say analog scaling. I'm going to press on OK. So before we build our instruction, we can specify several inputs and outputs that we're going to provide. So on the input side, the first one is going to be the input, which is going to be the unscaled value that we expect to get into our function. We're then going to select the lower and upper bounds for our specific range. So this is going to be lower and we do have to change the type. So the input is going to come in as an integer. So I'm going to specify that. The lower bound can be a real and the upper bound is also going to be a real. And these are going to be in our case, the distances which the sensor allows us to convert to. So in very simple terms, this is going to be from zero meters to 10 meters in terms of scaling. Now we also need a temporary value that's going to be inside of our temp. So I'm just going to call that temp one, and that's going to be a real value into which we're going to normalize and then scale. And last but not least, we also need an output. So we need to specify the value that has been scaled. So this is going to be output and we can certainly actually let's call that scaled output. And here, instead of just calling it an input, we can rename those to analog. I want to rename this to analog input. Analog input, perfect. So that's going to be an integer and then the scaled output is going to be a real or a float in certain other programming languages. Now we are going to introduce two new instructions. So if I go back on the right hand side and I scroll down, there's going to be a conversion operations section 
which I can expand and then go all the way down. We're going to use two of them. So the first one is going to normalize. So I'm going to select that and drag that into my first network. So what this function is going to do is it's going to translate the unscaled input into a one from zero to one, a real that is going to be uh, normalized. And then we're going to also scale that back to the output. So I'm going to put that right here. And so let's take a look at the parameters. I'm just going to slide down this window if you're following along. So on the minimum side, we are expecting a value from zero to 27,648. So that's going to be the range of the raw value that we're expecting on that specific input. And here, this is going to be input, analog input, analog input. And the output, this is going to be our temp value. So this is just going to convert from that integer into a real. What's really interesting is that in TIA portal, you can specify from which value to which value you're going to convert depending on the um, on the tags that you're using on your instruction. And so once we scale to this temp one, we can then proceed to scale it up to the value of our choice. So in my case, this is going to be from zero from lower to upper. And let's see here. So the tags that we've defined, so lower, upper, and these are just boundaries. So it's possible that you will have the analog input that's going to be, for example, analog input number two. And instead of scaling from zero to 10 meters, like we're going to do in this example, you want to scale from zero to 50 kilopascals based on a pressure sensor. So that's going to be different as well. And this is going to drive a scaled output. So everything looks good. This is our implementation of the function, what's important to check is that you're always scaling in this case from real to real, it's possible to get the data types wrong. In that case, if you're scaling to an integer, that's going to be specified from zero to 10, you're going to lose a lot of data. So what I'm going to do here is save my project, I'm going to move into main, in which we're going to drag out the analog scaling function, and specify some of the IO that we've discussed. So on the analog input side, we need to locate the address of the input. If I go back to my devices and networks and I select my PLC, I can open the properties menu, expand the window to show to see a little bit better. And if I scroll down to this analog input section into analog inputs, I can find the native address of my channel zero, which is specified to be IW64. So we can use this as the address in our main function. So let's go back to main. I'm going to close this window for now. So IW64 is going to be our analog input number zero. The lower boundary, as I specified below, we can enter as a hard value or we can make tags for it. It's going to be easier to just enter zero and our range sensor is going to go up to six meters. I keep saying saying 10 because that's the most common sensor of that specific kind. And then the scaled output, this is the value that we're looking to get out of our function. So here I'm going to call this input analog zero scaled. I'm going to press enter, I'm going to have to define this tag. Once again, it's important that it's going to be real local temp. That's fine. We can put it in memory as well. Actually, let's put that in global memory just to define that tag as such. And that should be it for our implementation. Let's download the program to the PLC and see what kind of result we get. Once we are online with the PLC and we have downloaded the program, we can turn on monitoring, which we've done a couple of times now and see what kind of a scaled input we get. Now I'm currently pointing the sensor at a wall far away from my computer. And as you can see, we are reading a distance of 2.5 meters. If I point it at the screen that's right in front of me, we are getting a 78 centimeters or a 0.78 meters value, which tells me that this is definitely an accurate measurement of the distance from the sensor to the object it's currently pointed at. And the function that we've written is working as expected. 
A very important feature in TIA Portal that allows us to troubleshoot analog signals is called tracing. So we can go into traces and we can add a new trace which is going to allow us to select a number of tags that we want to monitor. So here, since I only have one tag, I'm going to click on this little icon and I'm going to select a tag that we've just created using our scaling function. Next, I'm going to configure the record. So we're going to record this every 10 cycles. And what I'm going to have to do is transfer this trace into my PLC. So unlike Rockwell Automation, the traces are actually running on the PLC. So it provides you much more convenient and much more reliable way to capture certain events. Once we have the trace downloaded to the PLC, we can press on this activate recording and we're going to get an analog signal based on the readings we get of that function. So if I point the sensor back at the wall that I've had it pointed to before, you'll notice that the reading is going to be fairly stable at that 2.6. If I point it back to the monitor, it's going to start looking at a value of 0 0.8, which we've also observed in our main routine. Now this becomes very interesting because at this point we can start looking at the signals. We can also change the scale to make it a little bit easier to read, but while it's an automatic, it gives us also an opportunity to see what are the different sensor levels that we're going to expect. In any case, that's all we have for you today and we'll see you next week.